Hello, fellow believers, my students in this class. I welcome all of you all over the world. Jesus loves you. And uh, I praise the Lord Jesus Christ for his calling in my life. In the name of Jesus, so that I can share the word of God with you today in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Today I'm still in a prayer series, which is a discipleship prayer classes. I made a video about uh, the um, law of confession, how confession, our confession that we make is very important, that even our belief in Christianity is called the great confession. And I was talking about uh, Hebrews 3, uh, uh, verse 3, verse 2, that's, uh, verse 1 and 2, that Jesus Christ is our high priest of our confession. And our confession must match with our belief which we have in our heart. So I remember early this year, God told, gave me a word because uh, he told me this year is a year of prayer. That I have to pray all the time. In this end of the earth, we have to pray. And I wanted to explain to you that prayer is very important to any believer. So um, the Lord was speaking to me and said that I must pray every time. And under my chest, I must be praying. I must rebuke. I must counsel. I must uh, bind. I must decree. I think it was five or six decree and also uh, declare. So that was the things, the five words that he gave me. So I was trying to find out what does this mean. So the other day I, I spoke about the uh, rebuking the enemy, how Jesus Christ rebuked the storm, he rebuked the wind, he rebuked uh, Peter, who was the uh, Satan that was behind Peter, how he rebuked, you know. So if Jesus Christ, the Son of God, could rebuke, we ourselves have, God was telling me we have to also rebuke some certain situation. So, and also then the next thing was buying, binding. So I was thinking, where does it, this binding in the in the scriptures so i checked it it was in um romans uh, i mean um matthew matthew 18 let's go there together in the name of jesus christ so matthew 18 18 is talking about binding even matthew matthew 16 matthew 16 also talk about it let's go to matthew 16 first matthew 16 uh verse 14 and he says so jesus christ was asking whom do men say that the son of man is and then they were they were answering they say some say that you are john the baptist others say you are elijah others say you are jeremiah some say you are the prophet and then he asked them and said but who do you say i am and then the simon peter answered and said that you are the christ the son of the living god and jesus christ answered and said unto him blessed are you simon by for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And then he say unto, he also say on, he say, and I say unto you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gate of hell cannot prevail against it. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever you shall lose on earth it shall be loose in heaven so that is one of the places that jesus christ was giving us the authority he was telling us that whatever we bind here on earth is bound in heaven let's go to matthew 18 18. matthew 18 18 is saying the same thing about the prayer of binding how to bind he says here also, verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind here on earth, Jesus was Christ was the one speaking here, it shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall lose here on earth, it shall be loose in heaven. So that is how important it is that the gate of hell cannot prevail against us. Binding can mean so many things. Binding means to restrain. Binding means that you 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 hold them to paralyze to to make them not to do what they were continue that they were doing that is to stop them to stop the the the, the devil and his co-workers to bind them you know so you bind a situation there's a situation you can see you bind the situation you bind demons you bind evil spirits you know so that is just how binding it means the lord says that i give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and the gate of hell cannot prevail against you if we read let's go to um psalm 149 psalm 149 is also talking about here about this same uh, binding thing he says yes psalm 149 is talking about it's a praise psalm he's speaking about the praise i will read it very fast it's a praise 
to the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and praises unto the congregation of the saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion, which means the church, be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with tremble and herbs. For the Lord take pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and two-edged sword in their hands. Amen. Verse 7, that is what I want to explain now. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people. To bind their kings with chains and also with their nobles with a feather of iron. To execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all the saints. Praise ye the Lord. So God says that all of us who are saints of God, born of the Spirit of God, we have this honor to bind and to lose. We have the right because whatever you bind, that means whatever you don't accept, you don't agree here on earth. It is not agreed in heaven. Whatever you accept, which means whatever you lose on earth, it is lose in heaven. If you say, okay, I lose him, lose him and let him go. Like Jesus Christ did the same thing. When he went to Lazarus grave, when he called Lazarus out of the grave, he told them, he said, lose him and let him go if you read the book of mark is also explaining how jesus christ also said they should go and lose a cord that was tied somewhere and say if anyone asks you why are you losing in this court you say the lord commanded us to lose the court and they will let it go so that is how it is so whatever because we have the spirit of god here we are now kings and priests we are now god's ambassador here on earth we are the representative of, the, of god here on earth so we have all the authority the bible says wherever our voice is heard no one can ask us why so when we say something is not not allowed here on earth it's still allowed for example if you meet like you know the will of god like for example your 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 father or mother or your children or your your grandchildren or some, anybody in your family is very sick maybe you feel sick of cancer yeah and uh, you know the will of god that jesus christ took our infirmity and bore our sicknesses and by his stripes we were healed and you know this will of god and uh, then you don't allow that because you know that the devil is the one who came to steal. The Bible says that the devil is the one that oppressing the people with sickness and disease. And Jesus Christ destroyed that on the cross. He hung on the cross as a sin for us. The Bible says so that we should be dead to sin now and live unto righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. So if Jesus Christ already did that and you know that Jesus took our infirmity and bore our sicknesses and that by his stripes we were healed, then you have to rebuke that sickness. You have to bind the cancer. You bind the spirit because it's a spirit of infirmity. So you bind that spirit and you command the spirit to die. You said, I bind you in the name of Jesus. That means you are restraining it not to function and not to operate again in that life. And you can, can command it because everything here, the word of God, the demons are hearing you. They can hear the word of God. You say, I bind you, you spirit of infirmity, sickness and diseases in the name of Jesus. And I restrain you not to operate again in this life. And I command you to die in the name of Jesus. You can cause the cancer. You can cause the spirit. You can condemn them to die. That means you don't allow it. That is what means binding. You don't allow it. You know, then let's talk. So the Bible says that to bind their kings. So let the praises of God be in your mouth and the two-edged sword in your hand. Then to bind their kings. You have to bind their kings, their nobles. Then the kings are all the principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness of this world who come to make cause havoc. You bind them. In the name of Jesus, if you see some certain things that is operating in your house, in your family, in, you know, you know, this is not uh, the will of God. This is not of God. You bind it. You say, I bind you in the name of Jesus. You call it in the name, the, the, it is in his name and you bind it in the name of Jesus. I even gave a testimony last time about a situation where I met a madman, you know, and I bind the man and bind that spirit of uh, insanity. So there are different spirits because there are many different kinds of spirits, spirit of uh, perversion, spirit of uh, addiction, all kinds of spirit. And the Bible says that when you have the right, according to Psalm 149, as a saint of God, because you have the spirit of God, you have the right because God has given you this key to bind them. He said, bind their kings with chains and bind their nobles with a feather of iron. Psalm 149 verse 8. So let's go again now to um, Matthew. Matthew 12, 29. What does the Bible say here about binding the strong man? The Bible says here in Matthew 12, uh, 
Matthew 12 and verse 29. Let me see. Oh, yes, it says here because they were talking about. Uh, 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 say every kingdom Jesus Christ was speaking here because they were saying that Jesus Christ cast out devil with uh, the spirit of Bezebub. So Jesus Christ was talking to them here, the Pharisees and all the these. Uh, say uh, they say he by he is casting out the demons by the prince of the devils. So Jesus Christ said, no, it's not true. He's saying that a kingdom that is divided against itself is dissolute. Every house that is divided against itself, it cannot stand. So he said that if Satan casts out Satan, then his kingdom is divided. You know, and his kingdom cannot stand. And if I cast out uh, uh, by basic of evil spirits, then then you can be the judge. You know. So Jesus was speaking here now and saying that how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his good, except he first buy in the strong man, and then he can spoil his house. If you read here, uh, Matthew twelve, verse twenty nine. Or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his good, except he first bind the strong man, and then he can spoil his house? Why well, I I got this scripture uh, two thousand and uh, three or four times. God gave me this scripture in my vision. There was a time I was living in Vancouver, uh, and I was living in Vancouver in a in a, a rented house. It was like a kind of basement behind it belongs to an Indian people. So we were renting me and my daughter behind when we just moved to Canada newly. And then it was around uh, 2000 and uh, um, early 2011. So what happened is that in this place where I was living, before I moved to this house, I was praying to the Lord so much because I already moved in. Well, that was the second house I was moving. I was like, I don't want to move again. It's very hard to move. So then um, that night when I was sleeping, you know, God gave me this scripture. You know, say, how can you enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods? Except you first bind the strong man and then you can spoil his house. I do not understand what it, it, it what the meaning is. But in the, my vision in the night, in that dream, because I first went to that house to look at the house. It was really nice because it was a new building. And this uh, basement behind it was just like a walk, a walk out basement. It was very, very nice. So we, me and my daughter look at it. It was nice. The rent was okay. Everything, utility was inside together. So I said, oh, this is a good place for both of us because this was a, a one bedroom, you know, the bedroom and the living room and the kitchen and bathroom. And then in the night, when I, I went that same day to look at the place, I liked it, the rent was okay. So in the night when I came uh, back home, I slept and I was praying to the Lord, asking about that. That's when God gave me this scripture. And then after I got this scripture, I saw myself in that house. As I saw myself in that house, in the middle of that living room, there was a kind of statues, like people sitting there, like it was a kind of chair, people sit there and they have some kind of statues with some other kind of stuff, different kind of statues sitting there. It was inside that sitting room. And then in my, in my dream, I took all of them out and I threw them in the neighbor's place in the opposite house. So I don't know what happened, why I did that. So when now I say, okay, as God showed me that, that means God wants us to say, because he was cleaning the house. He removed all those statues, all those things. It was as if they were making a demonic meeting there. So I removed all those things and threw it on the other side of the place. And then in the next year, I went and told the guy, I said, okay, we want to get the house. We called him. He said, okay, we can come and pay the cushion and everything. We paid and we moved into the house. So when we moved into the house, the neighbor, that neighbor was a, a Indian guy, very, very rich guy. So he would stand one day on the street and he was waiting for me. And then he asked me, I said, how are you? Are you the one who just moved in here and this and that? And so I said, yes. You know, you know, I was going to my uh, school because I was doing that time my nursing course. So I was going to school that morning. He was waiting for me that early morning. And I said, yeah, I'm going to my school. And he said, ah, okay. You know, and I said, God bless you. And then were, I was coming back from school and I, then I was just looking near to his, because I always passed through his gate, like from his door, then to go to our own place. And then looking down and I saw a green snake there. The snake just moved inside the crowd and I was like, hmm, this is weird. In, in Canada, snake in Canada is very, very funny. Well, I, I did not understand what it was. And then um, just like a few days later, then I had again another vision, you know. Then this man came now into our house like, Pulling my daughter's spirit man, like I don't know how it was like in the vision, but it's very funny. But it was pulling her out, like then I was shouting in the name of Jesus. Then they just hook on the air that was rebuking him. I said, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I bind you in the name of Jesus. You strong man. I bind you in the name of Jesus. 
That's what happened. That's why I knew that that was a straw man that was sitting in that house that we wanted to rent, which was not even his house. And he was making his meeting, his witchcraft meeting there. So that is when I removed all his stuff and throw there. That is why we could stay there. That is why I understand why he said, why can you enter into a strong man's house and spoil his good, except you first buy him the strong man and then you can spoil his house. So that was the reason. So my brothers and sisters, if you have a strong man in your house or anywhere you live, there are always strong men. You have to bind the strong man. You know, the Holy Spirit that is in you is, is greater. If you read um, uh, this, uh, let me go to um, Luke, Luke 11 verse 21 you say when a strong man arm keep his palace he's good and in peace but when a stronger than him will come upon him he will overcome him and take from him all his armor wherein he trusted and divide his spoil that is what happened a stronger man which was the holy spirit that was in me came to that place divide his spoil bind that strong man remove his stuff and divide his spoil and cast him out out of that place so what happened because i always dream about uh, psalm 3 i made a small paper of psalm 3 and i put it on my window and on my door so and i saw him that came to the compound behind i was looking at it and looking the, the scripture so he could not enter the house anymore and i put the blood yeah anointed i anointed my doorpost and i anointed also my window so he could not enter anymore in our house to attack us any longer so that is how we disarm that strong man so binding the strong man or binding is disarming the uh, the, the the principality a, a spirit or a demon or a evil human being that is operating in evil spirit binding their witchcraft you know not to operate anymore because that the bible says that that is why the son of god was manifested to destroy the works of the devil so now god has given you jesus christ is living sitting in heaven he has given you the authority giving you the power through his holy spirit living in you to not to be afraid because he has not given us the spirit of fear but of power love and of sound mind and he has given you the authority so i give unto you power and authority to trample on serpents and scorpion and all the power of the enemy so now is your time now for you to uh, stand up arise as a child of god and take authority over any situation in your family if there's a strong man you bind the strong man bind that strong man in the name of jesus christ arrest him paralyze him stop his evil work in your life and in your family life or in your children's life in the name of jesus christ if not they come to steal to kill and to destroy you have to stop them in the mighty name of jesus so i bless i i hope that you learned something today from this binding the strong man according to the word of god in matthew 12 verse 29 in the name of jesus christ binding the strong man binding their kings binding their priests binding the principalities in the name of jesus if you go to an area sometimes there is a principality there territory you bind that strong man in the name of jesus christ i hope you learn something subscribe if you have not subscribed below and leave your comment ask any question that you want to to know in the name of jesus christ because uh, binding is a is a form of prayer that is how god told me say you this year you have to pray all the time in your chest you have to bind you have to declare you have to decree you have to rebuke so that is binding is one of them so that is why i talk about binding today and about so you can learn this in that scriptures that god has given you the keys to bind and to lose whatever you don't allow here on earth it is bound in heaven whatever you allow here on earth it is loose in heaven in the name of jesus i hope you learned something today in jesus name god bless you for watching in the name of jesus subscribe and um god bless you i'll see you in the next video in jesus name bye hello